Just when astronomers thought they understood comets, 3i Atlas rewrote the rules. In a single week, this colossal interstellar traveler blazed from red to emerald green, something no one expected, and no telescope had ever caught in such detail. The cause? Unfamiliar molecules, possibly alien cyanides, lighting up in ways never seen in our solar system, and triggering a fierce debate among scientists hungry for answers. But beneath the glow, stranger mysteries wait. This object became active far from the sun, challenging everything we thought we knew about comet chemistry and the birth of planetary systems. 3i Atlas is revealing secrets that could upend decades of comet science. So what is it really trying to tell us? On August 25th, the Very Large Telescope in Chile captured a sharp spike in cyanide emission from 3i Atlas. The spectrograph readings zeroed in on the 388 nanometer line, where the intensity of CN shot up by more than a factor of 10 in just a few nights. This wasn't the usual dicarbon signature seen in green comets from our solar system. Instead, the spectrum showed a dominant cyanide band with barely a trace of C2. The timing matched the first reports of the comet's emerald glow, a direct link between the chemistry in the coma and the shifting color seen by ground-based observers. The VLT team, working through the night, watched as the CN line overwhelmed the background continuum. Each data frame added weight to the idea that cyanide, not dicarbon, was now the main player. Other gases, like CO and CO2, lingered at low levels, their signals lagging behind the cyanide surge. The dust continuum, which had kept the coma red through early August, faded in relative importance as the green band brightened. By the end of the observing run, the numbers were clear. 3i Atlas was now a cyanide-dominated comet, at least in terms of visible emission. This direct spectral proof set off a new round of debate about what kind of chemistry could drive such a rapid transformation and whether the comet's birthplace might be unlike any region sampled before. For now, the evidence pointed squarely at CN as the source of the green, with the VLT spectra as the first hard data to back up the visual reports. Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb stepped into the fray with a challenge to the standard explanation. If cyanide is responsible for the emerald glow, why is the usual dicarbon missing? Loeb points to the possibility of a truly foreign chemistry at work. Molecules are ices that have never been observed in solar system comets. The CN-dominated spectrum, with almost no C2, is more than just a statistical outlier. It's a pattern that hasn't shown up in decades of comet surveys. Some researchers now argue that 3i Atlas may be venting exotic gases, perhaps picked up in a planetary system with very different conditions from our own. The debate has spilled into conference halls and online forums, with teams poring over every pixel of spectrographic data, searching for evidence of rare or even unknown compounds. Loeb's group has floated the idea that the comet's green light could come from photolysis of unfamiliar ices, maybe even nitrogen-rich or carbon chain molecules, the kind that form only in the coldest regions between stars. Others counter that the answer could lie in subtle temperature effects or layering within the nucleus, releasing CN before any C2 has a chance to build up. For now, the data resist easy interpretation. The absence of dicarbon paired with a runaway cyanide signal keeps the chemistry puzzle wide open. Each new spectrum adds fuel to the argument that 3i Atlas is sampling a chemical diversity far beyond anything cataloged in our own backyard. Edward Guo, an MIT astronomer working with the TESS satellite, found something in the data that didn't belong. By shift stacking a series of exposures from May and June 2025, Guo traced a faint moving speck against the star field, 3i Atlas, already glowing with a visible coma. At that time, the comet was still 6.4 astronomical units from the Sun, farther out than Jupiter. Yet over just three weeks, its measured brightness jumped by a factor of five. The test light curve tells the story. A steady magnitude of about 20.8 suddenly races to 19.3, a change far steeper than the slow brightening expected as a comet draws closer to the Sun. Guo's team ran the numbers again and again, ruling out image artifacts and background confusion. The result held, no comet from our solar system shows this kind of activity at such a distance. Not unless something more volatile than water ice is at work. Water ice stays frozen solid at these temperatures. 
Instead, the outbursts suggest that carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide hypervolatiles are vaporizing from within, dragging dust into space and lighting up the coma. This kind of remote ignition is rare, and it's a clue that 3i Atlas is built from different stuff than most comets seen before. The test recovery doesn't just confirm early action, it quantifies just how unusual this visitor really is. Light from 3i Atlas doesn't just tell us about its color, it carries the fingerprint of the dust and ice swirling through its coma. Polarimetric measurements taken from observatories in Spain and Bulgaria reveal something few comets have ever shown, a strong negative polarization branch at small phase angles. In plain terms, the scattered sunlight is more polarized in the opposite direction than expected, especially when the comet sits nearly between the Earth and the Sun. This effect is most pronounced in objects with extremely fine icy grains, often seen in the distant Kuiper belt, but almost never in bright active comets passing close by. Jane Liu, who helped pioneer the study of trans-Neptunian objects, points to this negative polarization as a sign that 3i Atlas's coma is dominated by tiny pristine grains. These could be frost-coated silicates or dark carbon-rich particles, each just a fraction of a micron across. The data from July and August 2025 show the polarization dipping below minus 6%, an extreme value that stands out even among the oddballs catalogued over decades. The uniformity near the nucleus with abrupt swings further out hints at a layered coma. Dense, fine dust close in, possibly mixed with more complex porous aggregates farther from the core. If these grains are typical for interstellar comets, it would mean our solar system's icy visitors are the exception, not the rule. The light scattering pattern, mapped night after night, suggests a chemistry and structure shaped in a far colder, more volatile, rich birthplace. Each new polarimetric frame adds another clue, but also widens the gap between 3i Atlas and anything seen before. The mystery now isn't just what the comet is made of, but what kind of worlds could have launched it across the stars. 3i Atlas stands out not just for its chemistry, but for its scale. Recent imaging from the Rubin Observatory in Hubble sets an upper limit on the nucleus no larger than five to six kilometers across. That's several times bigger than Borisov, the last interstellar comet, which measured barely a kilometer wide. Yet, even with this size advantage and a coma stretching hundreds of thousands of kilometers, 3i Atlas barely made it into our telescopes before perihelion. Simulations from the Rubin science team suggest dozens of similar objects could pass through the inner solar system each decade, most slipping by unnoticed. The odds of detection depend on both size and survey coverage, which is why astronomers are eager for Rubin's full operations to begin. For decades, comet science leaned on a single taxonomy. Dusty, volatile, rich bodies shaped by solar system history. 3i Atlas is forcing a rethink. Karen Meech, who has spent a career cataloging comet families, describes each interstellar visitor as a control group a natural experiment that exposes the limits of our categories. With a coma that polarizes light like a trans-Neptunian object and chemistry that dodges every template, 3i Atlas doesn't slot easily into known types. The question now is whether comet classification can stretch to cover these interstellar outliers or if a new branch is needed altogether. Every new arrival rewrites the rules, turning taxonomy into a living debate. October 29, 2025 is circled on every mission planner's calendar. That's when 3i Atlas swings behind the sun, completely hidden from Earth's view, right as it reaches perihelion. Astronomers are scrambling to secure every last observation slot before the comet vanishes from ground-based telescopes. Mars orbiters have the only clear line of sight during this critical window, so NASA, ESA, and CNSA are locked in negotiations each vying for time on their spacecraft. Every hour of data counts. The pressure is real. Miss this window, and the most revealing phase of 3i Atlas's journey will be lost to the sun forever. On August 25, 2025, spectrographs recorded a sudden spike in cyanide emissions from 3i Atlas, marking the start of its emerald transformation. This direct evidence, combined with test data showing a five-fold brightening at approximately 6.4 astronomical units and polarization signals not seen in any known comet, confirms that 3i Atlas breaks the rules of comet science. 
Its nucleus is at least 11 kilometers wide, making it the largest interstellar object yet detected. Yet, key questions remain. No previous comet shows an identical chemical pattern, and the exact triggers for its early activity are still under debate. With perihelion approaching on October 29, 2025 and observation windows closing, the scientific community faces a rare deadline. The facts are clear. Discoveries like these force a rethinking of comet chemistry, formation, and planetary diversity in our galaxy. 3i Atlas is not just a comet, it is a direct messenger from another star system. And every new observation brings us closer to understanding the universe beyond our own.